Hello, hello. Thanks for joining me once again for another Microsoft Build Book of News style update. That's what we normally do whenever Microsoft Build is happening. However, I'm going to put that off. We're going to talk about the Book of News next week because the Book of News covers every technology touched and announced by Microsoft in the Build conference. And it goes through going, we've got this preview, this preview, this preview, this has been updated, this is now generally available. It's really, really useful to get that massive view of everything Microsoft's working on. But honestly, if we did that, it would be dominated by one big bit of news. And that is this thing called Microsoft Fabric. Microsoft Fabric has finally been announced. We've got the green light uh, to talk about it for the very first time. And essentially, it's a new tool. Kind of. Kind of a new tool. Um, and it's being announced for public preview today at the Build Conference. Now, whenever there is this kind of announcement coming from Microsoft, it's always with a fanfare and lots of big, massive vision statements and lots of marketing speak, to be fairly frank. So I thought I'd do a quick follow-up video just to say, look, what is Microsoft Fabric? What is it? How does it work? Should you care about it? Are you going to use it? Are you going to suddenly start using it without realizing that you'd actually sign up to it? Well, we should probably talk about these things, shouldn't we? So that's what this video is all about, to give you this quick primer for what is Fabric? How does it fit into the existing world? Where does Synapse fit in? Where does Power BI fit in? What are, the, what are we even talking about? Just to get you started on this Microsoft Fabric journey. If you're new around here, don't forget to like and subscribe. You picked a doozy of a video. It's a big old announcement. So let us know what you think down in the comments. Let us know how you're getting on. And yeah, let's go from there. Let's go and see. Stolen a couple of slides from Build so we can talk about what's actually happening here. We can talk about some of the things. So number one thing that has been announced. Fabric. Microsoft Fabric. Now, there's a picture that's gone around a lot. So it is this. It is this one holistic view of what is inside this new tool called Fabric, the data platform for the era of AI. Okay, well, let's, before we start talking about that, what is it? It's a new SaaS platform that encapsulates all the different types of compute workloads you had in Synapse with all the existing SaaSification, the nice ease of use that you get in Power BI. I'll stop. That's it. All the lake housey, sparky, sequely bits of Synapse brought into the same SaaS platform as Power BI. That is what Microsoft Fabric is. If you're already a user of the premium version of Power BI, you'll just see some of these features of Fabric just get enabled and get turned on. You will see that working. So Fabric is a SaaS platform that encapsulates Power BI plus a load of stuff that you would have seen in Synapse and other areas of Azure. Okay, so that is your takeaway. What is this thing? That's what it is. Now, the way they're talking about it, it's just trying to use familiar concepts that have been really successful in the rest of Microsoft to try and anchor it with you. So the way they talk about Fabric is the way they talk about Microsoft Office. So if you take Office and you've got PowerPoint, you've got Word, you've got Excel, you've got a variety of very strong brand products, and you know in your head, if you're trying to work out some numbers in a spreadsheet, well, that's Excel, it's not PowerPoint. They're taking the same idea and trying to apply it to Fabric. So inside this umbrella term of Microsoft Fabric, you've got Power BI. Power BI is an existing tool. You know if you're doing data viz, you go into Power BI. That is an existing tool, one of the pillars within this particular suite of tools. And what they're saying is actually a lot of the workloads in Synapse, a lot of the way they put Synapse together, there's so much difference in terms of how you could use different things. It was very confusing. So it's an evolution of Synapse to make it easier, to make it satisfied, to make it work the same way as Power BI. But all these different things are just akin to having Word and Publisher, PowerPoint, and each of other Office tools in that suite. Now, like Microsoft Word versus PowerPoint versus Publisher, some of them are fairly niche and you wouldn't use for every day to day things. Other things you'll use constantly. And that's what's going to be inside Fabric. These different compute workloads, these different types of activity, which have a different name and they come from different areas. But that's what Fabric is. It's all underpinned by this thing called one leg. So before we get into any of those other boxes along the top, let's talk a bit about one leg. 
because it's it's an interesting concept. So the way they're putting this across is well, it's like OneDrive. Everyone knows OneDrive. You've got Teams and you've got SharePoint. You've all that stuff, and everyone just on their machine will goes into their OneDrive and they have all the files that they need. Uh, and essentially, Microsoft's argument is why can't we just do that for Lakes? It's just cloud storage. So if you're going to be storing some data and SharePoint stuff that you need to work on, you put that in OneDrive. But if you want to have some data and you want to put some data somewhere so that other people can access it, you can work with it, well, you put that in your one lake. Think about them the same way. Now, how we do that currently is, well, we'd, we wouldn't have one lake. We'd have many, many, many different Azure data lake stores. So we go into the Azure portal, we deploy some Azure data lakes, we then connect to it via Blob Storage Explorer or via the browser, and it's not as easy to work with as it is to work with OneDrive. I'll, hands up, I completely agree with that. Um, and that's the mission statement for one lake. So as soon as you turn Fabric on, it goes, well, okay, well, here's your lake. And yeah, you need to do security in there. You need to decide who can access which different bits of data. All of that stuff is still absolutely relevant. But making it as seamless to connect and to get files into and out of as OneDrive, sure. Great mission statement makes entire sense. So sitting underneath this suite of tools inside Fabric is one one lake, which is, yeah, makes sense. Um, there's loads of other bits and pieces of one lake. We'll do other videos around each of these different workloads because honestly, there's so much to talk about in these different areas. But getting that concept right, going, okay, well, there's a centralized lake. There's a centralized, really easy to use, really easy to access, really managed lake you don't need to worry about spinning up many many different adls gen 2 stores theoretically inside fabric um and then the different workloads well let's take a bunch of these workloads and kind of talk about where they came from so i mean doing a quick run through your data factory is, is your data factory now it's an evolution of synapse integration pipelines and the og data factory tool um, alongside some other ideas with Power Query and some interesting stuff in there. You've got data engineering. Now that's essentially the Synapse Spark engine, but just with a load more functionality and a load more really, really cool stuff put inside it. Should be a lot more up to date, should be a lot more hooked in, should talk to everything a lot nicer. You've got Synapse Data Science. Now that's partly some of the Synapse uh, Data Science stuff, partly some of the Azure ML stuff. We're going to be seeing various different data science workloads, data science activities inside this box. Data warehousing is an interesting one. That is our T-SQL engine. Uh, again, we still need the ability to write SQL and run stored procs and have various different transactional workloads. There's loads of stuff that we need to do inside a data warehouse, and we have that compute workload. And we'll talk a bit more about that in a second. Um, we've got real-time analytics in the form of Data Explorer, the custom engine. So we're still seeing that ability to big time series log diving analytics. You've got Power BI in there. There's a thing called Data Activator, which is the new thing that we can't even really talk about right now. So there's much more stuff coming in there. I'm sure there's going to be even newer logos and icons and things coming into here where we'll see what that makes up. So to try and put a bit of an anchor in people's minds when you're looking at this going, okay, so some of it's existing stuff, some of it's not existing stuff. How does this actually what? Um, so if we have a big old platform that we have built using a mixture of Azure and some standard Azure portal bits, some Synapse bits, and we've got Power BI, and then we're trying to say, well, how does this all translate into that new, the F world, the fabric world below? I mean, so will data factory and integration pipeline just turns into this new data factory workload within Microsoft fabric your various different data lakes become one data lake managed in the same way as OneDrive with all that power and functionality. Your Azure ML plus your Synapse ML comes that data science workload. You can see these are direct translations. You can see they're not thrown away lots of stuff they've done before. They've just taken those existing tools and evolved them to fit into the software as a service platform. So there's some parts that are coming from plain Azure and loads of parts that are coming from Synapse itself. So this is a controversial one. So we're no longer going to see two different sides of the T-SQL fence. So currently in Synapse Analytics, you see dedicated SQL pools, which has the big MPP engine, and you have to turn it on and turn it off manually 
you decide how many compute engines it has or compute um, nodes it has. And it's quite chunky. It's very big, it's very powerful. But you've also got the Polaris built serverless engine and you just write a query and it just works. But it's very black box and there's some things you can't do in it. Now, what we're actually seeing is these two workloads just coming back together into a single uh, serverless, well, single SQL workload. Notice we're not saying serverless anymore. We're not saying dedicated. There is just sit up data warehousing. It's the T-SQL engine. It works one way, not two ways, and it does everything inside of it. So again, it's going to be interesting diving into the depths of, well, what does work? What doesn't work? What? How do you take your existing workloads? How do you take an existing dedicated SQL pool workload on Synapse and just bring it straight in? One of the whole plans is it should be a real simple migration path. We've got Spark. So Spark pools you've got in Synapse just become Synapse Data Engineering. So when we're calling, talking about Synapse Data Engineering, kind of what we're talking about, the Spark engine, all the good stuff going in there, all the compatibility with various other Spark engines, all built in. And again, I mentioned we've got the Custo Data Explorer engine coming as this Synapse real-time analytics. But then there's a direct link from most of the different workloads we're seeing into what the evolved form of it is inside Microsoft Fabric. I mean, I've included Power BI in there, but honestly, Power BI isn't really going anywhere. Power BI is still Power BI. It's just now it suddenly has a load of siblings sitting in the same family, where it was kind of a lone wolf before. Now, this all sounds like a fantastic story, right? And there's one of the, the marketing elements that you keep seeing is, oh, this is a unified data platform, a unified analytics platform. And it's, well, that was the same argument made for Synapse when it was first released. Oh, we've unified everything. It's all in one workspace. Uh, and then they couldn't necessarily talk to each other in the same format. You, you had a very dysfunctional family of tools sometimes where one thing wanted you to work in a certain way and other tools in the same Synapse family wouldn't want you to work in the same way. So I can I get it if people are listening to all of this and being slightly jaded and going, well, we've heard all this before. But there's a shining beacon of hope that actually just makes this story make a lot more sense. So when we're looking at all of these different workloads, we're saying, well, okay, I've got some data that I've stored as part of my, my Synapse warehouse. I've got some data I've stored as part of my lake house coming from the data engineering side. We've now got a concept of a lake house and we can save tables as a lake house a little bit how, like how we had lake databases inside our Synapse, but just making a lot more sense and much more plumbed in. You can have your custom databases, you can have data sets uh, built in some of the other low code side of things and your Power BI side of things. So we've got lots of different data stores. And this is one of the places where we had a problem in Synapse because in Synapse, the warehouse would be in dedicated SQL pools and it's in a SQL table. It's only accessible when dedicated is turned on. Your lake house stuff is just in maybe in Delta format, maybe in Parquet, maybe in something else. Just everything stored in different languages. The fantastic news inside Fabric, everything is Delta. Everything is stored in Delta and they everyone insists on calling it Delta Parquet. Just Delta, it's Delta format. But absolutely everything is stored as Delta. So if you bring something, some data in via Data Factory, you can land it as a Delta table. If you write a bit of Spark in Data Engineering, you'll land it as a Data table. If you write some T-SQL inside the Warehouse Engine and you land it as a SQL table, it's stored in the lake as Delta. Now that is a fantastic story. That is saying, yeah, you've got lots of different routes to get at your data. Loads of different options for how people can query your data but the data is held in a single consistent standard format. You can land your data via the warehouse and read it via Spark. You can land your data via Spark and read it via the warehouse. You can read all of these Delta tables directly in Power BI without needing to lift and shift it into a model. You don't need to import it. You can just read the Delta directly. Now that is huge. That is a massive, massive statement going, right, there's just a single copy of my data stored in a consistent, coherent format and any of the various compute engines can read it. That is great. Kind of exciting. Really, really cool. So I can see there's going to be some people watching this going, ah, oh, God, I've just finished implementing a whole Synapse 
platform. And now the message is essentially coming, cool, Synapse was really good, but actually we've done it better. And that's going to be the story. The story is essentially Synapse isn't being turned off. If you currently have Synapse, do not worry, you can keep running that platform. That is absolutely fine. But you're not going to see a huge investment of features and of work coming from Microsoft. They're going to be putting everything into this Fabric product. But they've tried to make it as easy to migrate as possible. That's going to be the expectation of the next year or two. If you are building out a huge Synapse Lake House, you're going to at some point move it to be a Fabric Lake House. And that's going to be a hard pill to swallow for some. But it's going to make life so much easier for a lot of people. If you're using any other tools, if you're not using Synapse Spark to do a load of data processing, you might still actually land your data into the one lake and then serve it to Power BI from there because it's a really slick end-to-end -end journey. And we're going to see a lot of people who are just using Power BI at the moment log in and suddenly see all of this extra power at their fingertips that they can actually just start using. So it makes a huge amount of sense as a product, as a direction, as a Microsoft sticking their flag in the ground and going, right, we understand things perhaps weren't quite right in the past. Everything is Delta. Everything is consistent, coherent. Everything is SaaS platform. Note, there is no Azure here. I am not in the Azure portal to use any of these workloads. If I'm writing T-SQL, if I'm writing Spark, if I'm doing data science, I'm logging into the Fabric portal the same way I log into Power BI. I'm not going into the Azure data portal, but the Azure portal, to build out a data platform that can then surface anything. This is all software as a service. And that's a very, very, very different direction to anything we've seen from Microsoft on the data platform side of the fence. Part of it driven by the sheer success of Power BI as a way of working, as a platform, as a as a cult <laughs> of people absolutely loving the product and the way it works and how easy it is to actually use. So it makes sense to take all those other things which are seen as a, a specialist area, this, this deep area of expertise to try and stitch together products into a data platform to just say, well, actually, why don't we just make it really easy and go out like a Microsoft Fabric, please? Cool. And then that's built. It has a one lake. And I go, well, I'll build a bit of a lake house. I'll build a bit of a warehouse. I'll publish it all tied together into a Power BI report without having to worry about import modes. And then start giving that report to people. That is such a powerful message. So, yeah. I thought it worth just spending a little moment, aside from everything else going on in the big book of news, to just say, this is big. And you'll see in the rest of build, there are deep dive sessions going into engineering, warehouse, data science, one lake, all these other areas. But hopefully that helps to get that kind of just eagle eye view of going, what is this thing? It's essentially the SaaS Power BI platform, but extended into a suite of products called Fabric, of which Power BI is just one product. And then a load of things coming from the rest of Azure and Synapse added as new different products or workloads within Fabric to allow you to do data engineering via Spark, data warehousing via T-SQL, moving data around data integration via data factory and Power Query. Loads and loads and loads of stuff in there. So that's what Fabric is. It's a new family of tools as a software, as a service that is very, very firmly setting the direction for where Microsoft are going in terms of data and analytics in the cloud. And it's... Pretty cool to see. There's a hell of a lot in there. We've got lots and lots of videos coming over the next few weeks just to try and help you understand everything that comes in this one gigantic box. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you for the next video. Cheers.